talk about it. Yes. Okay, my name is Bas Retsios, uh, and I'm presenting you today uh, Ilvis Pi. Uh, Ilvis Pi has been uh, a development cooperation between uh, three departments uh, in this building uh, of the IPC, the GIP department, the Natural Resources Department, and the Water Resources Department. And what is Ilvis Pi? Of course, it's like NumPy, SciPy, ArcPy, maybe. Uh, it's a Python extension eh, with uh, Ilvis functionality. Now, let's see. For the people that have not uh, been familiar with Ilvis, uh, as uh, Serkan said, this has been software developed uh, at the ITC for the, yeah, with, with a history of uh, uh, indeed 30 years or even more. Um, it's a small GIS software. Eh? If you download it, it's about 30 megabytes of uh, download. Yeah? And uh, in recent years, we have been focusing on enhancing the visualization. So if you want to do your data exploration, eh, you can uh, uh, smoothly scroll the map. And what if you um, wanted a, a digital elevation model eh, in uh, three dimensions? You can go in and uh, move around. Of course, I prefer to do live demos, but I have to screen grab this, so that's why it uh, looks more chalky than it really is. Yeah? In reality, it's really smooth. And also, yeah, some interactive uh, functions that we have added. Eh? If you want to, um, how to say, to find a threshold in the, this uh, the data, an optimal threshold, yeah, you can uh, do it. Eh? We have uh, also added something uh, that is called the space-time cube. Eh? Two dimensions on the floor for the space, and the third dimension is time. And in this case, I move the whole cube, and there is an animation showing on the floor of the cube eh? for spatio-temporal analysis. Uh, we, okay. Now, what else can we do? Uh, Ilvis has always been able to uh, compute a simple formula like this, eh, whereby uh, the names of the raster images are in the formula, so people have been uh, able to uh, appreciate that. Now, of course, you say, yeah, that I, I can also do. Yeah? Um, with, uh, together with the urban planning department, we have uh, developed this. Perhaps some people recognize this. Uh, this is a spatial multi-criteria evaluation application whereby, uh, in fact, we define a model with input maps, go through formulas to produce an output map. But the urban planning people, they want to focus on developing the model and not on the actual formula. So I, for the sake of it, I'm displaying the actual formula that comes out. So this is a per pixel formula that is applied uh, on the input maps to produce the output map. Now you say, if this formula can be uh, produced mechanically, yeah, you can go further. And some uh, other staff colleagues have been uh, producing this. They complain it does not fit on my screen anymore. OK, and this deserves a nicer formula. So the formula also, <laughs> per pixel formula. So Elvis has always been, uh, been famous for this computation because computing this long uh, formula is, takes almost the same time as the small formula. Yeah? So the, the data access is the bottleneck and not the computation. And also, it has been used for uh, the number crunching. Eh? If you have time series of images. Uh, these are uh, images every five minutes for one day. But OK, one day uh, is not enough. Uh, some people, one week, one year, 20 years. Yeah. So they produce this, and it, uh, in 20 years of data is being processed, uh, whatever you like to do it, in, in, in a day or in a weekend. And the students come back. So um, I have shown some part of visualization. So we still use the Ilvis desktop software for visualization. We have not. Uh, we have no plans to transfer that to Python. But we have developed an Ilvis Python extension for the computations to give an alternative to people that uh, would like to use Python. Now, what was uh, the motivation, indeed, is to, uh, the first thing in this picture, to support geo-education using open and free tools. Yeah? You might want to, uh, uh, how to say, to use your local computer your laptop in order to do some computations, eh, with this picture, with some extensions, eh, or you might want to do it in the cloud. Eh? So we like to produce something that can be installed equally, uh, with equal ease, locally, and in the cloud. Uh, luckily, we have Serkan here, and we, every time we ask him, please put a new version of uh, Ilvis extension on Crypt, he can do it. But sometimes we don't have admin rights on the cloud. So even if you have no admin rights, it uh, should be able to install. Now, so the motivation comes down to 
yeah, we, we want uh, integration of ILVIS computational functionality with Python. The objective is to achieve more with less coding. Uh, the existing ILVIS functions, those are about 200 uh, functions. They are not simply um, multiplication and division and addition. Yeah? They are more composite of, uh, operations. So, of course, you can say I, I can do it in NumPy with uh, pandas, but uh, we offer an option whereby you can crunch a, a large list of uh, NumPy statements in one statement. So the student or teacher will focus on looking at one line, which is easier to read. Um, okay, Elvis has always had a history of running uh, high performance, so it will run as well on all the computers, considering also our, uh, our target audience, eh, the developing countries. But if you have a supercomputer against it, you will run faster, of course. And, of course, the biggest challenge, okay, to make it run on Linux. Elvis has historically been a, a Windows uh, package. Okay, so what is the result? We do have the, produce the Python extension here, is simply, uh, you do this after you install the Python uh, package, of course. And uh, there is indeed, a, yeah, this is the, the Jupyter equivalent. You can also do it in Jupyter. And there is a large number of operations already implemented in the Python uh, version, but of course, we still have a long way to go. We can use multiprocessing. Eh? If you have a supercomputer, you can uh, let it divide the task among uh, many CPUs. And uh, we are offering the option for uh, a limited size for, uh, of a raster images. So we are not giving you the out of memory error that you may have uh, encountered in NumPy. I think I jumped. Yes. So the use cases that we are considering is indeed the, our education and our research and uh, projects. And we, have had it, we have had some uh, dedicated operations. We have had a time shot temporal filter, which uh, my colleague from the Natural Resources uh, Department will uh, show. But this is a, a filter for a, raster, a series of raster images, whereby um, some in, at some moments in time values are missing or they are suspicious. So that filter will smooth uh, the result. And one of our PhD students has been uh, developing a spatial temporal tracking algorithm. In his case, he was tracking clouds with all their properties. And those are dedicated operations that we have been adding. Okay, use cases for cloud and big data handling yeah, and incorporation of models. Now, some... Uh, demo of the functionality. Of course, I would have preferred to have this uh, as a live demo, but this is uh, as well. This is a very nice example of combining one other library in Python, which is the OpenEO library, with the Ilvis library. OpenEO is uh, giving you a uniform way to get data from uh, several data providers, cloud data providers, and uh, one of them being Vito, eh, producing the NDVI values. The other one, in this case, I will show it, is a Google Earth Engine. So in this case, we are getting, fetching data from Google Earth Engine without you having to open your Google Drive. Yeah? So here it is, the OpenEO library. And here is also in this. So I have had a case study in Cape Verde here. And those are islands on the west side of Africa. So the first thing that you need to do is tell the OpenEO library that you want to connect to the Earth Engine data set. Yeah? And then you have to log in. Yeah? I put my username and password there. Yeah, your, your Google Earth uh, cred credentials. Then you will specify the data set that you want to have. And in this case, it is a land cover uh, image of uh, 100 meter uh, pixels. So the data is downloaded and in this case, of course, uh, plotted in line with matplotlib. So, so far, so good. Yeah? So now I will repeat the same thing, but in this case, with uh, monthly rainfall uh, data. So uh, currently Google Earth Engine is a new thing here in OpenAO, so they don't support uh, you to download 
uh, a time series of raster uh, bands. So you have to download them one by one. So that's why, indeed, the Jupyter Notebook also reports to me that uh, he has been downloading 12 files uh, of 2020, one per month. Now, for the sake of the example, again, in Matplotlib, I show this is uh, September, and this is the area of Cape Verde. So I leave it like that. Okay, now with one, one very simple line, I bring the data of the 12 months into Ilvis. Yeah? And then I use Ilvis later from now on. Let's say I, I request from pixel 100 and 101 all the values of that pixel in the 12 months. And, well, what if you want to, to do the temporal uh, uh, aggregation of this, eh, to, to get the sum of your 12 months into one band? So that is the way to do it. This is a statement, okay, there's some more on this side, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so you produce one file, and now you want to visualize it somewhere. Matplotlib would have been an option, but there you cannot zoom in, zoom out, scroll. So, the result we download and we put it in the list. And then you see also, I can overlay and I can get the pixel values. Yeah? So the computation you can do in Python, but for the real visualization we still, yeah, you can use uh, Google Earth uh, Map or Google Earth Engine Map yeah. or so, but yeah, we prefer to use this. Okay, the future, eh, our plans. We would like to, the installation for Linux to make it a bit smoother. Uh, currently, um, yeah, it's a bit handwork. We have a zip file and we ask Serkan to unzip it or we do it ourselves. We would like to make automatically uh, the Windows extension uh, for uh, the different Python versions. Uh, we have started with 3.6 a few years ago. Suddenly there is 3.7 and then there is 3.8 and 3.9 and 3.10. Now maybe 3.11, I don't, uh, I couldn't keep track. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we have to add uh, the more functions that are still in the Ilvis desktop software, uh, the SEPs, yes, Surface energy, bal energy Balance System, those are about 15 functions. Yeah, the Hydroflow functions, also about 15 or 20 functions. Yeah, the Kriging Interpolation uh, functions. So we have to add them that are uh, popular, and of course there is a, a lot of other functions missing. Uh, missing. Okay, we are trying to improve the API every now and then that asks someone and tells us, look, this is not logical. So I'm sorry, I cannot use it like this, so please change it to the way I like it. So we consider it and we uh, try to improve it. Uh, we are busy with the automated testing. Now that's a big challenge, of course, because, yeah, if your tests are not complete, you are still able to mess up the core of your functionality. And then in the next version, someone will say, yeah, this, has, this worked last month. So to make the testing complete is a big challenge. And also, we are trying to make the documentation in the form of uh, Jupyter notebooks. Uh, our teaching staff is busy uh, creating uh, notebooks that use Ilvis that will show how to use it. But uh, the programmers themselves, they have to offer the first uh, uh, notebook that uh, shows all the operations and all the options. And that's a big task. That's it. Questions? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bas. So, um, any questions uh, about this part? So, um, Actually, maybe one thing we can talk about, the first version of Ilvis, in fact, uh, was working with the Hercules uh, graphics cards with the, the last screen where you have this uh, only green uh, in it. So it, it has really a, a, a lot of hi history. And Ilvis Spy, in fact, brings Ilvis capabilities to, to modern infrastructure, including cloud computing and, and big, big data. Yeah, we, we try do our best indeed. The optimizations that we, that we had in the past in the old software that has been created to even uh, when the, the Pentium existed, it was working still on the 386 nicely. So those optimizations are not lost. So we are taking them with us. Yes, great. Yeah. Uh, how, how big is the uh, project team, Buzz? How many people are working on this? Maybe you can give some information. Maybe we can raise our hands. Ah, they are also here, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Uh, actually, how many people had uh, worked on Elvis in the room? Can, can they raise their hands? Yeah, so uh, we have a lot of people actually linked link, link to Elvis uh, as development and also a, as users at ITC. Oh, but you're, if you're talking about the past programmers that are no longer with us, that is, those are uh, in total, I don't remember, 10, 20, 15? A lot of people. So uh, when uh, in the past we had a, a big Elvis group, um, uh, it was an actual department, and we had uh, six or seven programmers. I forget even. We had two people that were writing the documentation, and we had even a marketing department because at one stage it was a commercial product. Uh, that's no longer the case. Uh, at one stage we decided to make it open source. Repository? On, on GitHub, I think Serkan has included a link in the in the today's program, uh, uh, pointing directly to the correct resources. I think so. If yeah. not, we can we can add it to the, to yes. the collaborative so token. Okay. Yeah, don't use Google. Google will confuse you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much again, Bas, uh, for for your your presentation.